filming at the wet shore. <laughs> Not far, I suppose. And uh, first of all, I, I want to say thank you very much for coming along. They can get some young fella. This guy here can get hooked on pee tomorrow. Yeah. And he's, he's got a date to the mungle ball. He's got a farm You can go and buy a gun of meat tomorrow yeah. and give it to them. Yep. Arm drop or something. And see if they can get the zero one under. Play the other TV. TV. As a police officer, how do you love my local national TV? So I can sell 10 guns to you tomorrow and you can go and sell to whoever you want and there's no record of me ever gone. And that's what's happened to a lot. I think a lot of firearms have disappeared into the. just disappeared because once I've sold them, and, and not, I'm saying that you guys aren't selling legally, but if you sell them to, to your mates and things, that's fine. Yeah, we've got licenses, but this guy here might not be trustworthy. He can buy 10 of me today and go and sell them to the Mungle Mob tomorrow. They have um, very little luck tracking back stolen handguns to the line. No. And if, if you have a to procure, then, and the police should theoretically be able to look at that data and say, okay, well, this guy had it originally, how did this guy get it? Yeah. And they're saying in their report that they can't, they can't use the if there was um, a, a database that allowed them to do this quickly and easily, would that would that change the view at all? I think I, no. Because I mean, I've, I've had a ECAT, the USA, all my licenses, I've had numerous rights, pistols, and I'd say about there's a 50% chance when you take them into the place to get the answer to the serial number. Really? Is it that so bad? when I've sold, when I've sold them, I've sold them to a dealer. And they're going to go say, oh yeah, they sort everything out. And they don't sort things out. Both the gentleman over here just forced it to think. Try to get it, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he said, we want to get back to the issue about how to keep the guns out of the game. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's not that really what the issue was. Mm -hmm. right? And I mean, I can't understand how gang you would get a gun license to start. I mean, that just seems ludicrous. No. I, I can help you there. There's about 3,500 known gang members to the yeah. police. Yeah. 26 of them have firearms licenses, yeah. alright? So they're always going to get guns. But they've always... been proven in England, it's been yeah. proven yeah. in the state. So you're not so... going to stop them getting them. Being a gang member is a category that says you are not a physical person. So the, police, the, the courts have actually ruled on that. Yeah. If you steal a gun, you're then charged with having a gun unlawfully. Right. If you also steal a car, and a couple of other things and what have you, and it's something else more valuable, you're charged for stealing all those as well. When it comes to court, do you see many people get charged and get time that's concurrent uh, with his other charges? No, they're all bloody lumped in together and you might as well not bloody bother. That um, if you get caught poaching fish, yep. you lose your, your boat, your car, yeah. And a whole lot of other stuff. That's right. You lose your, yeah. you lose your hat. Well, yeah. can you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you get caught with a gun, then you get slapped on the hand with a wet bus ticket. You don't need, I think if you go back to some basics here, one is when you sit your firearms license, and anyone correct me here if I'm wrong, but safety is drilled into people when you sit your test. There's actually not a huge emphasis on security. Now I work in agriculture for a living, so I deal with a lot of farmers. And I hear time and time again too many people with lack stories of lack security with them. So that's where they get stolen from. Secondly, regarding safes and security, I still think there needs to be better measures of security because you hear of too many stories of safes just being ripped off walls. But they take the whole thing. still continue to be ripped off walls. Doesn't matter what you do, they're determined. They're they're gonna they're gonna they're 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 going to take it. If they're going to take it, they're going to make it harder, then that's all better. But rather than spend a ton of money on frivolous things that actually aren't going to change anything, maybe it's better government subsidised for higher quality heavy duty safes. A lot of you guys in this room, I'm sure, he can be held as a really good thinking. Yep. Most of you are, which is, which is, I, you know, I don't know a lot of you guys, but a lot of you guys around, and you've already got your e-cabry. And my, my biggest concern if they change the semi automatic from T22s to semi automatic rifles, a shotguns, then all of those guys, thousands of them out there, shouldn't duck. They're going to say, well, my, now my $3,000 burrito is going to be worth 500 bucks because I can't afford it to go $500 safe. I, do, I won't get my e license because I'm not a fit of a group. If you've got a trick driving charge or an assault charge or something, 
anything. You've got to have a reason to get that category license. You can't just give it. You can't just give it because you've got a You guys have really worked hard to get yours, but I'm talking about thousands and thousands of people who are going to say, well, now my my single mother had a rifle in 22 years ago. I'm not going to just hide it and go underground with it or sell it in the black market. That's where they're going to go. You're going to hold up more. You guys already got your licenses and you know how you want to look after them. And you want to look after your rifles and things like that. And what you've got, you want to protect. And, and, and it's, it's amazing how many you guys have already got it here to stand up and say something when there's way more guys than, than you guys that are not here to stand up for what they're going to lose. The magazine at the moment, when does it go to make that? Seven shots. 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 I think if you read this, guys, yeah. the police have come back and said they would like to make MCSA 11 shots and over. Okay? So T22 Rugers. What? All the shotguns. It's not a war. No. Have a look at the, the police get to change. This is half the thing. The police are changing their policies. You can go to one area of New Zealand and the firearms guy's got one yes. interpretation of the law. Yes. You go to another one, he's got another one. The police shouldn't be setting this stuff. This is what we pay these guys to do. Yeah. So there's, there's one really important point you're saying, and this kit did come through with some of the mountain safety training actually, is that the firearms officers need a much stricter guidelines uh, about what they should be doing and should be looking at and should be testing because the lack of consistency is real concerning. So there's total inconsistency. Um, it's, it's the war as we've got, but I think it's one of the best in the world. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I've just reset my license. Well, because it's spoiled. Same house, same gun safe, same everything. And then passed the first goal. When the guy came the next time, I happened to have just bought 10 slaves of shotgun in there. He took one look at it, started using words like Armageddon and how could I possibly need that amount of ammunition. And I failed at about four different points. And I said to him, go away and look at your file and see why I passed last time. When he came back the next day, he said, oh, it says in your file you had a monitored alarm. He said, oh, I didn't see that. He said, it said you had pins in your door. He said, well, they're still there. He'd come back and seen what he thought was an excessive amount of ammunition. It depends on the person that you get, their interpretation. You get some guys to tell you what to say in the answer. Would you use a gun to defend yourself? He said, if you answer no, you get straight to question 27. If you answer yes, you've got about another hour of questions. The guy doesn't even come and see me anymore. He rings me on the goddamn phone and he says, what do you think about this guy, John, blah, blah, blah. And I go, oh, he's good as God. Does he drink too much? No, nah, he's fine. Well, what, what I've tried to do is, is outline what feedback I've got, which will, I will take back to the committee and take back to my caucus. And that is the recommendation that we look at the census, or not look at, review and revise the census for people who are using firearms to commit a crime. Uh, the second thing is that fit and proper person, we've got to ensure that if someone is in a gang, they are automatically ruled out of that fit and proper person category. Or prospect or associate. Oh sorry, yeah, that's what we said, or prospect or associate, absolutely. The third thing is, is what I was trying to explain before, we'll make the Firearms Act more prescriptive so the arms officers actually um, yeah, have, have a lot less discretion, but they know exactly what they've got to do, and it's not up to the discretion or interpretation, which, or, or their interpretation, yeah. which varies right across the country. People are asking me they, on the white feed, they want you to clarify what your position is on registration. In terms of registration, again, what I've heard loud and clear is that it, it doesn't work. But what I, but that's not emphatic. Am I right in saying that? But, but in terms of keeping guns out of the hands of criminals, okay, it doesn't work. If, think, you guys, if you guys are saying that theft is the number one way that criminals can fire, uh, firearms, and we haven't actually seen any, um, any evidence, any data to suggest that. There is, I, I, I can give you data. I have got data on how many firearms the police have recovered. Okay, so let's say it's implied that theft is the number one way that criminals can fire firearms. Mm. Registering the guns is going to do nothing for theft. 
If we did register firearms, would it be easier for the police to trace where those firearms had come from? Your own example answers that question. You said there were 14 MSSAs found at the gang headquarters, mm. and they don't know where any of them came from. Yeah, yeah. MSSAs have been registered for how long? It could have been since 1992. 1992. Since 1992. Well, they could have been so, categories converted. Yeah, out of the 14 uh, firearms right. that they found, the surely the Christ yeah, one of them yeah. has yeah. been yeah. since yeah. 1992, yeah. and they couldn't tell you where it came from. And what I will do is I will go and ask the police about that raid and, where and those guns find out from? if they have managed to track where through any certain guns where any of those guns have come from. Can we go back to what you were saying before about you've come here tonight and you've, you've talked about you know what, what you're going to go away with so we talked about um, you know harsher penalties and we talked about security. Yep. What, what were the other points you were going to raise? Uh, just, just making the firearms app a lot more prescriptive. Yep. So we didn't leave it to. Oh, so, first, so secondly, taking things out of regulations uh, and putting it into the Arms Act, which would mean the Arms Act is obviously it's a bigger piece of legislation. But what it would do is it would take discretion. Uh, first of all, out of the hands of firearms officers and police. But what it would also do was mean whenever the, whenever the police wanted to change the rules it would have to be an amendment to the Arms Act and it couldn't be done through regulations, i.e. Uh, MPs don't debate it and New Zealanders don't have the ability to submit on it. We, we entered this in, in good faith, okay, and I didn't enter, I didn't start this by saying, okay, how can I best piss off 200,000 cameras? We, 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 I was, I was, yeah. <laughs> and their families. No, yeah, exactly. But no, I, I genuinely, I'm genuinely concerned we want to know how we can do things better so firearms don't get in the hands of criminals and gangs. Uh, and we got subjects. And I'm not so submissions now. Why did you not read any of those? They're telling you the exact same things that we're talking about. We, we read all these and we also heard from people who were, um, you know, great. if you say there were... Uh, yeah, we, 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 yeah. I read everything. And what we did is we had... Um, we had the police as our expert advisors, and on every single committee with every single report, whether it's tax, you have expert advisors from the IRD. If it's uh, a law and order, you have expert advisors from the police, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, uh, what I am doing here is saying uh, that the feedback I've received from right across the country is we've got that wrong. So what do we now need to do to get it right? What we now need to do is have a different conversation around how we actually achieve the outcomes that we set out to achieve in the I think the right. concern here, Stuart, is that you go back to Wellington and say those things and they say, and the other nine say, no, we've got it spot on, let's carry on. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, what happens. I think it's what we want to all know what's going to happen next. Okay, so, so the process is um, the police receive this report and then they write a report for the minister. And uh, they don't have to agree with any of this. That, that one's going to take about three or four weeks, so it will nearly be on her desk. The minister then makes a decision around whether she accepts that uh, police report or not. And so if she accepts it, or doesn't, if she doesn't accept it, then this ends up in the bin and we all move on and, and it's, it's like this didn't happen. If she accepts it, or there are certain aspects of the report that the police accept and the minister accepts, then that is codified in legislation. So what you'll end up with is an amendment to the Arms Act, which then goes through the parliamentary process, which then allows Kiwis uh, another chance to submit on any changes to the Arms Act. Uh, and what I will do is I'll probably write uh, a one to two page report for my caucus and saying, hey, on all the feedback I've got, this is what I've heard, and this is now what I believe our view on this should be. They're acting in that in, in that manner. And you know what, that, that is a very good point actually. In one of the Police Association magazines, uh, a number of the association members, i.e. police, said, and I think it might have been 60%, but don't quite remember, it's, it's quite a high percentage said that we do not believe we're getting enough training with firearms. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, my takeaways are what I, you know, I've said a couple of times, what I've taken away from this and what I would do if I was Police Minister. Uh, I can't promise you that the police won't make changes in regulations because I have no control over that. But what I can, what I would say is unless, unless they push a bill through under urgency, 
then no legislation will be passed before the election. And unless a bill goes through under urgency, uh, then anything has to go to a select committee and the select committee has to call for submissions. And what I would urge every single person to do is if a bill does go to select committee and you have real concerns about it, then for goodness sake, write in and let the committee know. How do we find out if that's happening? Mm -hmm. I'll let you know. The fact that you know, all you guys are here, that we've got big networks, says that if there is a piece of legislation um, with, with changes to the Arms Act, it will get out there, I have no doubt about it.